beauty is presence, and it resides in the far northeast corner of Alaska. The Arctic National Wildlife Refuge is a great breathing space on the planet. A pause of peace in a world too familiar with war. Scale cannot be registered here in human terms. It is geologic, tectonic, and primal. It is a landscape where snow geese create blizzards with feathers, where herds of caribou appear on the horizon as heat waves, and where polar bears walk on water. It is a landscape where the Gwich'in, native to this region, recognize a continuity of life that is now threatened by a collision of dreams. One dream speaks of respect and restraint, honoring the integrity of communities, both human and wild. Another dream speaks of needs and wants, the desire to feed the insatiable hunger of an oil-based economy. To drill or not to drill in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge has been an ongoing pull between those who see raw wild beauty as a deeply held American value rooted in interdependence, and those who see raw crude oil as the economic link to American freedom and independence. Both dreams ask us to consider the long-term health of the Arctic, which we now understand to be ultimately tied to our own. At a time when climate change has become a global reality that demands a global conversation, never has the protection of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge been more essential for ecological integrity and spiritual solace. The power of nature is the power of a life in association. Nothing stands alone. Life is intertwined and interrelated. When I was growing up, I lived out on the land from March until June, and we'd welcome the caribou and we'd harvest the caribou. Once again, we'd be happy. If that relationship with the natural environment is gone, it's gone. No amount of technology is gonna bring it back. And it's gonna impoverish mankind to no end that another indigenous society has perished, that has suffered a slow and painful death. So we've been there a while and caribou's been there with us side by side for many years and we live together, we take care of the caribou, and they take care of uh, us. So our story is that uh, uh, we're in a caribou heart and we're, a caribou is in a heart. In the Arctic refuge, one ecosystem gives way to another. Jagged mountains pierce clouds as glaciers melt into hanging valleys. Waterfalls cascade into streams that meander through boreal forests that give way to tundra, a florid tapestry extending to the far north and exploding in summer light, culminating in fingers reaching out to the Arctic Ocean as estuaries, lagoons, and braided rivers find their way back to the sea. The beating heart of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge is this coastal plain where the pulse of the planet is both felt and seen through a spectacle of wings. Millions of birds fly in and out from all 50 states and six continents. For the Arctic turn, it is an epic act of endurance as these fairy-like birds travel almost 22,000 miles pole to pole from Antarctica to the Arctic and back again, following light. Large mammals follow the birds. Grizzlies, wolves, and wolverines wander the coastal plain as predators. Another cycle of nature ensues. 
123,000 caribou, known as the porcupine herd, migrate to their ancestral calving ground each year to give birth. Here, the caribou can raise their young in peace, mindful of the predators watching them on the periphery, a balance that is held for millennia. Each day in the Arctic is an unfolding drama between predator and prey, shadow and light, winter's frozen stance and spring's awakened dance. Nearly 200 species find home on the Arctic coastal plain. If I could bring people up there and show them the values, show them how it fills your heart and soul when those caribou come over the valley and you see the grizzly bears and the polar bears and the moose and the muskox. This is a treasure that needs protection. Uh, big oil and the refuge will never mix. And we feel as Gwich'in that what's on top of the land is much more valuable than what's below it. I go out in the country, I don't want to come back because it's so uh, comfortable and you breathe that fresh air, drink that clean water, and uh, you don't see that anywhere in the world. We feel like uh, Alaska as a whole, or as a Kuchin people, we feel like we have a lot to teach the world. And, uh, and we can't lose that. Uh, it's for our future generation, not only for our Kuchin people, but everybody. Standing inside this vast circle of wilderness, one can reflect on the poverty of an imagination that would choose to exploit, extract, and extinguish the wild beauty of the Arctic refuge over an imagination that chooses to protect it. To understand this, one must witness the 1,000 square miles of Prudhoe Bay and the surrounding oil fields, where the oil and gas industry has compromised both the environment and native communities. If a similar path is followed, drilling for the oil in the Arctic Refuge's coastal plain would create an immense ecological footprint with devastating effects. An infrastructure of roads with vast patches of scraped land to house the rigs that would pump out the oil would appear on the landscape like an exposed nervous system. Disturbed vegetation would grow back very slowly. The peaceful habitat for caribou and migrating birds would be shattered by rigs and derricks pumping oil 24 hours a day in a blinding array of lights. In addition, waste pits dug into the fragile tundra would release toxic chemicals into the natural system. Oil spills, which on average have been a daily occurrence on the North Slope over the past decade, would wreak havoc on wildlife. Now regardless what kind of development uh, is still going to uh, affect uh, our way of life and affect uh, the ground and the animals there. Regardless what kind, how careful they're going to be, there's no technology in the world that will pick up every gravel and leave the place before summer and leave it the way it is. Just consider these few facts. Current oil operations on Alaska's North Slope emit more than 56,000 tons of nitrogen oxides annually into the atmosphere, contributing to both smog and acid rain. They also release untold amounts of greenhouse gas, a major contributor to global warming. And for what? The amount of oil that scientists predict will be available on the coastal plain of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge at peak production is a fraction, barely 4% of the amount of oil the United States uses in one year, and it will not even be available for at least the next 10 years. It is time to ask 
When will our national culture of self-interest and the exploitation of our public lands stop? For decades, millions of Americans have fought to give the Arctic refuge the strongest protection possible. It is time to act on behalf of the wild. It is time to act once again on behalf of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. This is the open space of democracy. Raw wild beauty is a deeply held American value. If we listen to the land, we will know what to do.